What if instead of tyres, you had like legs and shoes? Hmm. Hello there internet, so it's that time of year again, it's the last video of the year, it's YouTube Baker's Secret Santa and this year we have 12 wonderful creators all making for each other in secret. Now this year I've drawn Mr James Bruton, Mr 3D printing robotics man himself and I kind of thought, <laughs> what am I going to make this fella then? Because we've worked with each other before, we made an Alexa operated flamethrower, a bed shaker and of course he helped me on the Hulk Buster to do all the controls. Excellent. Now then, just lately he's been making some quite funky little like devices, like little motion devices, strange wheels, you know, ways of moving. And he's done this one thing which is like a wheel with all little pegs and feet and stuff all over it. And I kind of thought, hmm, I wonder if, I wonder if James would like to experience that in bigger form, you know, to see if this would work, you know, with his weight on it. So that's what we're going to do. We're basically going to make one big enough to fit in a bike and see if it works. Okay, now for James to be happy with this, I think we try and have to use as many computer and CNC machines as possible. So our laser cutter, CNC plasma cutter, 3D printer. Oh yeah, we're gonna smash the hell out of them. <laughs> right, so this is the thing. He's called it a four-wheel drive walking wheel crawler vehicle. And it's basically like a load of little feet, with a load of bearings and stuff shoved on some very strange axle. And then when you put them all together and stick them on a uh, vehicle, it kind of like steps and rolls and plonks over things. And they've actually got the thing off an old patent, and it like and it kind of goes like the the bottom feet always stay flat, and then they kind of all clip clop and flip flop over. Now, of course, in plastic and lightweight, it works quite well. I don't know what it's going to work when it gets big and heavy. Hmm, and it's got a human's weight bearing down on it. Hmm. Right. First thing I think we should do is laser cut some real big disc thing and try and work out how to do all the little legs. Yeah, yeah, something like that, Colin. Something like that. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, got myself a circle with some holes in it. Because what I'm thinking, uh, we'll use these for legs. They'll sit there. I've got these little little shims which will go either side of it, and then they can move up and down. Now, if you're wondering where I've got the scale and everything from, James actually does offer downloadable CAD files. Only I went to do that, and it just come up as a load of text, and I'm Mr. Lo-Fi here. I was like, I don't know what to do with that. So instead, I screenshotted a picture of it, overlaid it in Fusion, and then kind of just drew around it. So this is roughly right. We can't just have them sliding up and down like that because they'll jam up, you know, in plastic and in small, that's fine, but in big with big old humans on it, not going to work. So I'm thinking if we get some bearings either side, so then I cut some more little bits with extra holes in, they can sit there. We'll bolt the bearings down through there, either side of it, and then it can slide up and down. Yeah. So now I need to do that all the way across there make loads of shims, give some little spaces for them. That's a lot of laser cutting, that is, Colin. Now, that's a lot of stuff. Now, there is a budget for these projects of £75, and some of you look at that and go, Colin, those bearings must have cost you more than that. And yes, they would have. But I rang Simply Bearings up, I told them about Jimmy B, and they said, oh, you can have them for note, boy. Right, let's, uh, let's put it all together. Yeah, it's actually surprisingly solid as well. Not too heavy. Bits of aluminium. They go in nice and uh, nice and freely. You can tell they're up against the bearings. That is a good thing, Colin. Okay, we've got to make all these legs. Now, basically, it needs a bearing on the end, which kind of sits on this central hub thing, which we're going to have to do. And then on the end of it, have some pads. But I'm not going to put some pads. I'm going to personalise it more to James. I'm going to put shoes on the end. And on the end of the shoes, I'm going to put boots. So it's the Booten. It's the James Booten wheel. Yes. Right, got some legs. Now, of course, I've had to make 14 of these. Now, to put the slit across there, 3D printed a little jig out so it could sit in the bandsaw, hold it at the right place, stop it, cut it, very nice. Then, to do this bit down the top here, made another jig. I put it in the bandsaw, it holds it in the right place, it comes down, it cuts it, ooh, very nice. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a James Bruton project 
we didn't have some 3D printers, so I've got two new 3D printers going, printing all the feet out, and then of course I've CNC plasma cut all these brackets, we've put them all together, and this is what we've got. Now, before I slide it into there, I wanna sort the hub out in the middle, because I need to do that first. going to happen now that it's not going to fit in a bike. <laughs> I don't even put the feet on it. <laughs> right, well anyway, it, it looks cool, it does look cool, and and it works. Well, say it works, it looks like it works. <laughs> okay, I've, uh, I've added the feet. I don't think it's as good with the feet. When they go flat on the floor, it does look pretty cool. However, they don't always do that. They sometimes flick back, and I think we've got a lot of extra joints that we don't actually need, and it definitely is not gonna fit in a bike in this. So what I'm thinking, we can do away with all these feet, and just get these little boots, which I've got for the booting, and actually just put them straight on the end, like that. I'm gonna sort all the front of this out. I think we want some elastic that goes around and that pulls all these in so you don't get the ones floating around in the middle of nowhere. And then stick it in a bike. And then we'll see if it actually works as a wheel. The J Booten wheel made above ground. I feel I have to point that out these days. Okay, got it in the bike. Now I did have to extend the forks, it wouldn't quite fit in. But of course the question is, Colin, does it actually work? Well, it goes round, but uh, I've had to make a new central piece, because basically when it started spinning around, the bearings were digging into the 3D printing and starting to crack it. So I've made another one, which is a metal plate with a plywood base behind it. And this is a lot better. Now at the moment I've got a bit of bungee cord around the outside which pulls the legs towards the central hub and if you film it in slow motion you can see this in action. Now I have run it where the cord actually pulls it away from the central hub which is how I had it before. That's probably why the 3D printed broke because you can see there's only one or two feet poking up in the middle. Now how do you cope with bumps? Because that's one of the things that you're supposed to be sort of good at. Okay, now I basically just rode straight at the pallet and you can kind of see what this thing is designed to do. Basically, when you hit an obstacle, this centre thing is supposed to be pushed up by the legs and to face it, so then you have full flat feet going towards the obstacle. Now, of course, to get this working perfectly, you have to fine tune the shape of this. The length of the legs, I think mine could be a bit short, make them a bit longer. But I think if I was gonna make it again, I'd probably enclose all this, make the whole thing out of steel so it's a bit stronger. But other than that, it's an interesting theory, an interesting idea. Right, let's get it off to James, go and leave it on his doorstep, and then of course I've got a secret Santa present which I've got open that's been sent to me. I have my secret Santa. Now it's not very secret because it says return address Becky Stern, New York. So thank you very much, Becky. Now Becky is quite a small channel, so go and give her some love. She kind of makes electronic crafty projects. It's a bit like a slightly different version of James Broom. I'm surrounded by 3D printing Arduino powering people this year. So then, Becky Stern, Becky Stern, Becky Stern. Sounds like a Middle Eastern country, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, there is a message. I didn't give a message with James. He <laughs> just left it on his drive. How many bits? Hello, Secret Santa. Colin, I made you a New York hot dog experience machine so you can have a taste of what it's like if you're on my side of the pond. We've got a hot dog machine. Oh, it's pretty cool. Oh, we've got stuff everywhere. Ain't no tape shortage in New York, is there? Right then, people. Let me present it to you in three, two, one. Hey, so then we've got, when you switch it on, Sounds of New York. Now I know this is supposed to be a New York hot dog experience, but I do apologise, Becky. 
I've swapped out your mustard for ketchup. Don't like mustard. Ugh. And rather than your onion relish thing, which I'm sure is fantastic, put some real onions in here. You know, I'm a fussy eater, but you know, I'm sure it's gonna be good. Right, now essentially, there's a sensor under here, and when I put this on, it's gonna roll past it, we hope, get squeezed with sauce, and then get down to it, and then the onions will tip on it. I, I think. Right, let's give it a go. Let me come round here. Oh, 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 there we go, here we go. Ah, oh, no, no, no! It's a good project, because all the experiments and trying to get the timing right has left me with a lot, a lot of food. <laughs> Look at the first attempt, it's just all ketchup. Here we go, here we go. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Becca Sam, for a wonderful New York hot dog experience, which I've made slightly British, I must admit. <laughs> Everyone go and check out Becky's channel. Go and see what James thinks of his own invention I've made. <laughs> but there we are, that's YouTube Maker Secret Santa. We only do it for the smaller channels, really. You know, show them a bit of love. There we are. Next up, we've got more tunnel. Obviously, in the next tunnel video, it is going to get connected to the house. So I'll see you in 2022, people. Mmm. I love a triple after.